Tonight we have one of our own, our own sister, our ever smiling daughter and child of God. She loves the Lord passionately. She leads a family in worshiping and praising the name of Jesus. You all know Sister Sibongi Le. We are grateful, we are thankful for her. She's going to bring the word tonight, and we know the Lord has prepared a word through her to share with us, to strengthen us, to rebuke us, to correct us, to train us in righteousness. Sister Swong, you may step up to the podium and let the Lord give you a word. Yeah, you just took what I was going to say. I was going to say, you know what, COVID, God has his own plans and COVID is the best thing, but I'm back. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, those that thought they had gotten rid of me, I'm back, I'm in the house. <laughs> um, we, we praise God and we thank God in everything. Uh, we should never ever stop praising him and never ever stop uh, no, but and his will will always be there. Um, I know Pastor was trying to push me away from talking about COVID, <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about COVID. Um, I'm just going to do the the our yeah our yearly theme this year year of divine fruitfulness. Um, I'm going to read here because I have it right in front of. Me. This is my year. This is my decade. 2020 is my year of divine fruitfulness. As I press on to maturity, I will reach for higher heights and deeper depth for that place as I press into the measure of the fullness of Christ to experience full blessing in Jesus. In this year and new decade, 2020, I will worship, I will fellowship, discipline, Disciple, serve and will for my Lord as I endeavor to attain the divine fruitfulness which the Lord gained for me. So, I'll praise the Lord. Um, you know, I would like to thank God for this theme um, because it says a lot. It's it's a it's a few words, but it says a lot. I'm not used to talking to myself. People that are at pastor's house, please, can I hear your voice this time? <laughs> so weird. It feels so weird talking to myself and not seeing people. Um, so today I'm going to talk, I'm going to come to you with a word that comes from Daniel 3, verse 16 to 18. And I entitled this, um, I entitled my, my, sermon today is called even if he doesn't even if he doesn't and um i have it right in front of me so i'm going to read daniel 3 verse 16 to 18. verse 16 shadrach meshach and abednego replied to him king nebuchadnezzar we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter we are thrown into the blazing furnace. The God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and would and He will deliver us from Your Majesty's hand. Eighteen starts with, but even if He does not, I want you to hold that close to your heart, because it says, but even if He does not, we want you to know, Your Majesty serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Brothers and sisters, we are coming today and I know we sometimes we pray to God and we, we have things that we expect from God. And I know we, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they are in the, they are thrown in the furnace. And um, as they are going there, they have so much faith in, in God that their God will deliver them. 
it didn't stop there. They say, even if it doesn't happen, we still know he is God. We still know he is God. We, still, we are still not going to bow down and worship these, these uh, fake gods. The image of that you have set up. Because we know that he doesn't today. I know sometimes we pray. We pray so much for what we want. And we say, oh, God, this is what we want. This is what we want and nothing else. And nothing else. And when it doesn't happen, we actually start doubting God. But look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are going in the furnace. And just as a side note, um, it, say, it says here, um, I'm reading, I was reading the commentary for, 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 this verse, for these verses. And he said, pots and pans are made from metal to stand up to, to high heat. The Babylonians used furnaces so hot they melted metals. For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Babylonians heated the furnace seven times hotter than normal. So this furnace, they knew this furnace was for metal was to, to burn. The furnace was to burn metal. And they, they were going to be thrown there. I was listening to the testimony. Say, these are times, in these times, we don't know. We really don't know what's going to happen. And we are running away from something so small that we, don't, we can't even see it. I don't even think we can be smart enough to run away from this virus. We cannot. Because you, in whatever you do, Sister Daphne, I listening to you all the wipes, all the throwing clothes in the washer. Good for you. It's a good thing. But to be honest, can we really say there is a way we can be safe from the virus? There is no way. You have to trust somebody who is going to put those. Uh, they, they, I, I, yesterday I went and bought these, um, you know, the green pepper, yellow pepper, and the red pepper in a big, in a big tube from Target. And I'm thinking, there is, I have to trust the person first. This is fresh vegetable. There is that person who picked it from the farm. How do I know they don't have COVID? It was washed, okay? It was packed by someone in a plastic bag. This plastic bag came from somewhere else. How do I know that the person who brought the plastic bag and the person who put the pepper in the plastic bag doesn't have COVID until it gets to Target, until it gets to my house? taking it and I'm wiping it, I, I, I know there is no way we can say we are going to be smart enough to not get the virus. Because it, it's, it, it, it's no way. I, can, I cannot really think that there is anyone who can be smart enough to say I was smart, that's why I didn't get this, this, this virus. If we don't get it, it's by the grace of God. And we should thank God if we don't get it. And I go back to, 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 Mishik, to, to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you today that these guys were so mature in Christ. They were so mature in God. That's where... That's where that this kind of maturity, where you say, God, this is what I am asking you for. But even if it doesn't happen, I will respect you. And I will always smile. I will still not about anything else. Because I know you are God. There are many times that we doubt God. I was so, I was, when this coronavirus started, I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, now I know it's serious. But I was saying, you know, the Bible says in Psalms 20, verse 7, some people trust in chariots and some in horses. Oh, the Lord our God. I was people who ran, who ran over and hoarded pepper towel and toilet paper. I was, I was, their hope was in toilet paper. Paper towel to say 
you know what? Yeah. If there is, if this virus comes, I will be safe because I have paper towel and toilet paper. Where do we put our trust? Are we there yet? Do we really, who do we trust when things like this happen? Do we tend to? Do we where is that where, where is our, our hope and where is our faith some people ran for paper towel some people said you know what if the virus comes and my house is full of toilet paper i will be okay and some people ran to paper towel and they said if my uh, if the virus comes and i my house is full of toilet paper i saw a video of women and you know they have black women fighting over paper towel on video. <laughs> and I say, you know, you know, it, it, it's a difficult time, but this is a time for us to reflect on what really is important to us. I sent a picture on the, on the group about how Bibles were being bought to. I think this is a time to focus really what it is that's important to us what really is important to us some people this is a rehearsal of a time there will be no stores there will be no school there will be no interaction for the first time we always say united we stand united we stand right now divided we actually stand why there is this lockdown stay at your house Go to your friend's house, don't go to your parents' house by yourself. Maybe you are safe. Where is our trust? Our majesty to be seen during this time. In this year, we are supposed to worship, to fellowship, to show our discipline, to serve, and to witness, to be fruitful. We are looking to we are looking to God and we are saying, God, some may trust in chariots, some may trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Are we standing right there? And you know what? God never promised us, never promised us a smooth sail. That's why difficult times come to our lives. Sometimes something so difficult happens to you, and you are saying, God, why? Why? Those are the times that you have to be even more faithful. This is the time that you say, God, even if this happens to me, I will still stand with you. I will still remember you. God does not owe us a happy ending. I know we love, we love superheroes. We love uh, stories and every I, I watch it, uh, the movies. We watch uh, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, or they, they fight, and then uh, the girl goes to the airport, and then the boy follows, and then, you know, he's the hero of the, of the whole thing, and then they, uh, they go back together. And all. We love stories that end well. But God never promised us that all our stories are going to end well. He never promised us that. God promised to walk with us through every fire we will face. That's why he was with this text, Patrick and Abednego in the fire, in the furnace. He was there with them. He was there with them. He had stood and declared in front of everybody that God, you know what? Even if it doesn't happen, there, even if we burn to ashes, to God. That is mature. That is maturity in, in, in God's word. That is maturity. In, in, that is maturity in being a Christian. That is what's expected from us. That's maturity. To grow closer to the Lord the most important thing in your life. Whether things are happy or whether things are bad, whether situations around you are understood or 
misunderstood going closer to the Lord is the most important thing that can happen in your life. And I love this period. I see like the Bibles were being bought and people were buying the Bible. I see people are in prayer groups. I see people in, you know, people coming to, 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 to services online. I see people posting verses on, on social media. That is what God wants from us. God wants us to grow closer to him. That's the most important thing. We need to mature as Christians. Mature Christians stop pointing out everything else. It's everybody else's sins. Oh, did you see this person? Oh, she was wearing a mini skirt. Oh, did you see what my Gutu was wearing today? Oh, the skirt was the, the skirt was so tight. Oh, this, oh, this was this. Mature Christians stop pointing out everyone else's sins, but they start confessing their own. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm not perfect. Lord, you know me. You know the thing. No one is watching. Please forgive me. Mature Christians watch their words and know when not to speak. Amen. Crazy how people are, take, are picking all these messages that the COVID. I'm so done. Please don't forward anything else about COVID to me. I'm done. I, 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 at this point, I know everything I need to know. I'm surprised by Christians who are sending all these conspiracy theories and these things that are scaring people. Oh, this is the end of this. Oh, Jesus, somebody even had, had the audacity to take a video somewhere and say that's Jesus in the sky. And it was watched by thousands and thousands of people saying, I'm seeing Jesus by myself in, my, in this place. I'm the only one seeing Jesus. Mature Christians watch their words. They know not to forward those messages that are scaring people of things that we don't even know are true. Mature Christians are less dependent on themselves and increasingly dependent on Christ. Right now, and you know the good lesson about this whole thing? If you think you are so smart, it's an equalizer. Your money will not help you with anything. Amen. Your, your children will not help you with anything. Your, 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 your brains will not help you with anything. If you are meant to die, you are going to die. So, you know, mature Christians are less dependent on themselves and increasingly dependent on Christ. This whole thing is teaching us to be dependent on Christ. If by God's grace, if we miss this virus, and right now you cannot be even smart enough. You just, if this is my portion, please <laughs> let it pass. We are praying to God. And mature Christians make every effort to build on their faith. This is a good time. See, most people are not going to work. It's a good time to put the to bed, and it's a good time to go and close yourself somewhere and build on your faith. Say, Jesus, I just depend on you everything. for everything. I'm here, I depend on you. And say, you know what, Lord? Even though I walk through the darkness valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your Lord and your staff, they comfort me. This is, a, this is a good time to really stand on God's word, really call on, on God's promises, because our God is looking for our maturity. He's looking for our maturity, and we need to be mature in his things. We need to be mature in his things. Um, I used to, you know, uh, 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 when we were younger, uh, they, you know, in, uh, there is a song that we need to, that was sung, that people sang. The, 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 the song says, uh, this world is not our home. This world is not our home. And I, you know, now that I look back and I, I say, you know what, people lie. You know, even in church, we were, we were lying. 
and saying, it's even said, you know, we are not happy to be here. We want to go to the to the home, um, the home that's that's so peaceful. And <laughs> you know, when this death thing, people are so scared of death. I'm 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 not saying I'm ready. I'm not ready. Please God, I I don't want to die yet. <laughs> but <laughs> but the way people are so scared of even Christians, you think. If, if, if this home that we were singing about is a better home and it's a better place to be, why don't we want to go there? It doesn't make sense that this, this is, we say, we're saying, uh, this is, um, I, I, my soul belongs for this home. But when we say, okay, now it's time, everyone is running away. And everyone is, I'm not saying go and die. I'm not saying that. I really am not saying that, but I'm saying, you know, as Christians, we also should not be moved by fear. Fear should not be the motivator. I know Pastor had, had said that before, that are we really controlled by fear? Are we saying, okay, I'm not even going to go and buy groceries because I'm scared? Are we going to say, you know what, I'm not going to, 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 to say hi to my neighbor because they might have COVID and they will give it to me? Are we, are, are we fearful? Are we, we see Meshach, Abednego, and uh, Shadrach. They know they are going in the fire. We don't even know whether we are going to get it, whether we are going to, uh, whether we are not going to get it. We don't even know. They knew they were going in the fire. They said, "Okay, throw us in there because our God will be with us." But even if He is not there, it's okay because we are going to this better home. Maturity. As Christians, we do need to mature and we need to mean what we say. We do need to mean what um, we are looking at um, Paul. Paul taught uh, new Christians. If they were new Christians when Paul was going around and teaching them. And he, you know, I, I can only imagine his frustration. Sometimes he would come, start a church, talk to them, and then when he leaves, he thinks, oh, you know what, these people are mature, you know, God's work is going to go on here. And then he hears of something that's, going, that's happening over there. And then he, he I, can, I can see his frustration in what he was in, in his writing. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20, he says, brothers, do not be children in your thinking. We cannot continue to be children in our thinking. We need to be mature. We need to grow. We need to really, if we say we trust in God, we need to do trust in God. Are we mature enough to trust God in every part of our lives? Are we like Abraham? Who said, God, if you say I am going to kill this son, I am. Are we mature enough to be like Joshua? We told, you know, this is like a war. And he's told, okay, just walk around seven times and then just bang things and make a lot of noise and the walls will come down. Are we mature enough to really trust that God means what he says? Are we mature enough to follow Moses into the Red Sea when he says God will part the waters for us? Are we there? Or we just say things because we are not... I was talking to, 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 to my son yesterday about, uh, about really being kind. And, um, you know, siblings, sometimes they, they do things that you say, oh, 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 hold on, please. <laughs> and I was saying to, 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 to him, were you being kind? And he said, oh, yeah, I was being kind. And I said, I, no, he said, oh, no, she had done something to me. And I said, you know what? When someone has done something wrong, that's the time that you really need to show that you, that you really need to show that you can be kind. Because just doing nice things to someone who is also being nice to you doesn't really show that, it doesn't really show kindness. When you are going out there and helping someone who will never help you back, that's kind. When you are being kind to someone who is actually not treating you right, that's kindness. So are we mature enough to follow?
try saying no what happened i can imagine them that day you're saying okay let's go god will part these waters for us are we really mature enough to be like mary who is told you are going to become pregnant without sleeping with any man and he's going to be that calm and go will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worth of worthy of the lord fully pleasing to him bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god we have a job christians we have a job we are supposed to at some point we have to bear fruit at some point we have to mature at some point we need to show that you know what i've been i am growing he says may you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy giving thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in life at some point these are new churches and you know paul is saying you know what i came there you didn't know anything i taught you something but you need to be growing you need to be growing because you cannot be babies forever this is a, we have we have to press on to maturity so that the fruitfulness can be seen that's what we are doing this year okay in the situations that we are thrown in how can we still be fruitful how can we still show up in the word of God? How can we do that? What does it take to be mature? What does it take to be mature? What are the things that we are supposed to do to show that we are maturing? I'll tell you a story. Um, you know, I, I, am, I am the first born. So I am the first in a family of five. And there is, I have a sister and three brothers. And um, so I'm the, I was the first one to go to boarding school um, at 13. And, um, and you know, they were, my, my father was just a businessman in the rural area. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and to be honest, yeah, he, he school was very important to my family. And he sent us to boarding school. And we were going there with... So when I got there, there was these all oh, these rich, rich people from Harare, from Blawayo, from where, you know, all these rich people. And um, so the first year I went, I, you know, we have new everything, new uniforms, new shoes, new everything, everything is new. Uh, the second year I'm going and my father says, ah, you can take the, you can take the shoes that you had last year. <laughs> And I cried. Oh, I said no. They are no. I'm not going. I'm not taking those old shoes back to school. I want a new pair every year. So my father went. Uh, so my father worked at for the cotton company of Zimbabwe, Kanyati, like the growth point. So he would sometimes go. He he was the he one of the people who fix the ginari. He worked in the ginari the machines so he he went to gokwe center <laughs> and he bought these shoes that had no name and he brought them home i had cried for new shoes right he brought these shoes home they had no name and that was the year that the wayne brenner had just yeah, just came out yeah. wayne yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i said what not wearing this shoe that has no name. <laughs> I want the Wayne Brenner. And 
my father said, no, I'm not going to go back to Gokwe Center because, you know, in Zimbabwe, there's no, oh, you bought something in Target in, in New Jersey, you can give it back in Target in Pittsburgh. No, the shoes were bought in Bata, Gokwe Center. The shoes needed to go back to Gokwe Center. I cried and cried and cried until my father gave me money and I went and sent those shoes to Gokwe Center, that was the only time I was ever at Gokwe Center. <laughs> I brought those shoes back and I brought my Wayne Brenner. And today, as I look back, and that I, I had my parents go through, like, you know, and I was, so, you know, those, those jokes that people make when they say, oh, and it's a Slovenia. I made this at boarding school. I did all that. I did all that. I every school trip that was that people went to, I said, if I stay, I'm the only one who is not going. And my father paid for me to go to Victoria Falls, to Nyanga, to all these places. And looking back, I know my father didn't have that much money for people that were coming from Harare, from their father's running big company. That that was immature. That was immature. And today, because I am a little bit mature in what I'm doing, I and I say, you know what? I think I have grown from that. Right? I know if we don't have the money, I the shoes that I want, I will wear any shoes that I get from or from what can I say? The payless is no longer there. But there is maturity that should be seen in a person. That's why even for our children, one day crying for milk, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and I take a bottle and I give it to them. But sitting there and going, yeah, 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 yeah. no, I say no, I use your words. If you want a bottle of milk, say bottle. And what are going through Christians during this time that he feels they are babies and he has to keep going and giving them a bottle and they have to no we have to mature and at some point i expected to even get a bottle for ourselves what does it take to be a mature christian what does it take to be a mature christian what does it take to get to and I made me God to, to say, you know what, God, you know what, Nebuchadnezzar, it's okay. Throw us in that fire. See what happens. And even if it doesn't happen, it's okay. Even if it doesn't happen, it's still okay. Because our God will always be our God. Our God will always be God. It takes some training. It takes some discipline. It takes some reading the word of God. It takes some coming to Bible study where I have learned so much. Where I have learned so much that I thought, you know what? I learned, you know, this year I'm so happy. I learned that, you know what? At every point of your life, you have a choice. At every point of your life, you have a choice. You have a choice to eat or not eat. You have a choice to go to exercise or not to exercise. Sell out Jesus Christ, not to sell out Jesus Christ. At every point of your life, I am maturing in Bible study. I am learning. I am growing. And, you know, I want to talk to you today about what it takes to be a mature Christian. There are long, long, you know, when Christianity first came for everybody, there were people who, like, you would judge others and say, you know what? Uh, no, we are Christians. We don't talk to people who do this. Oh, we are Christians, we don't, we don't associate with these people. But our job as Christians is actually to go there and, contact, and, and be in contact with people. Not right now. Actually, to talk to people. Who doesn't, who doesn't talk to people at all? You have to go fish. You have to be able to ask good questions. Meet someone you have never met at all you have never met before and ask good questions and start meaningful conversations. 
that people trust you. You have to you should learn to be part of a community. Get to a place and be part of a community. Sometimes we say, oh, we are Christians. We don't talk to all oh, these people around us. We don't know God. How are they going to know God if we never talk to them? And like Paul always says, we don't always have to go and start saying, shove the Bible in, in someone's face. But you can start by being a friend. You need to be part of the community. I tell you, when I moved here to Pittsburgh, I didn't know anyone. And now I'm telling you in my neighborhood, I am so known. I go to Target and people are saying, oh, hi, Sibo. Oh, hi, Sibo. People, people that I never, I didn't know two years ago. Why? Because when I came here, I became part of every the, the activities that the children are doing. I volunteered. I went there. I got my clearances. I became part of it. When they, they, they need to, to, to sell uh, juices and juices at the children's school, I go there when they wanted people to, to come and do some sewing for, sewing for the play. My daughter was in the play. I went there. I took my needle and I was sewing. And people know me community be a christian who is part of the community don't say you know what i will i we are people because i am or i am we are not better than other people and people will see that you are not you are not making yourself better than them by you being part of the community share the gospel when you become when people trust you in other things you can then share the gospel you can actually say and people will hear what you say because they will say whatever that makes you like that i want it that is being a mature christian maturity this care of pressing on to maturity what have you done what are you doing to be part of your community the Zimbabwean community you can be part of the botanian community you can be part of the uh, Malawian community, you can be part of the Kenyan community, you can be part of the Jamaican community. There is nothing wrong with you being part of their community. You can be part of where you live. People should know you. They know me. I will be here two years. I've been here less than two years. But I'm, I'm being part of the community. And now when people say, what do you do on Sundays? People are trying to invite me to things on Sundays. I say, no. To church, or I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm doing this. This is what I do on a Sunday. And people know not to invite me. Or they say I've actually taken some children around from my neighborhood. I've taken them. The parents don't go to church, but they said, oh, we want, oh, Eva wanted to come and play with Tadiu. I say, oh, on Sunday we are not here. We are going. To, we are in church. And they said, can Eva come with you to church? I said, yes, of course. Share the gospel. Convert others by what you do, not what you say. What you do. Amen. This is what Christianity is. Someone sees you so happy, so jovial, so part of the. And you know, sometimes we say, "Oh no, I'm living in a in a white neighborhood. There are no black people here. So oh, if I go there, they will be looking at me. Oh, they will." And you are the only one who is thinking that. People are not even thinking that of you. So you convert others by who you are, by what you do. When people see you, what do they say? You know what? If this is what makes, if, if this joy is found in Christians, I want to be a Christian. Commit. Amen. Be part of what's going on. Be publicly known that you are a Christian. Get baptized in public. You can start, yes, baptism is a public act to say, you know what, I'm a Christian. I want to do this. Amen. You show that you are, a, you are a Christian. Don't hide it. Be part of the church. I know maybe we have some people here listening on Facebook. I see Pastor is getting a lot of a big following on Facebook now. If you don't have a church, be part of a church. Show that you are a Christian. Sometimes when conversations are going ways that you know you you don't want to be part of that or conversation is nothing to do with Christi Christianity, you can say, you know what, I don't want to be part of this conversation because this is what I believe. Stand for something or for for everything. 
You need to be able to say that you're something. That's maturity. You need to be able to say, you know what? This is what I believe in. And I'm not, I'm not biased on what I believe in. Because I'm a Christian and I know what's right. As long as you know what's right, you are fine. It's okay to be the only wrong one in doing the right thing. Amen. Because that is a sign of maturity. A sign of being a mature Christian. Commit. Grow. Grow in Christ. And help others grow. You cannot be big. Christ, be Christ-like. We are all trying to be like, to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. We ask ourselves in situations, what would Jesus do? That is to be Christ-like. Meditate on the word. Grow. Make your grow. Don't be a child forever. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants. But not in your, but in your thinking, be mature. Even the Bible doesn't want us to be like children. It wants us, the, the Bible wants us to grow. God wants us to grow. But you know what? When I started coming to JCC, there are a lot of things that I, I was doing and I thought they were okay. But now, what have I dropped? What are the things that I say, you know what? This is not Christ-like. And when this is happening, I'm not going to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Integrity. That integrity. When God is watching me, what are the things that I am not doing anymore because I know? Mature Christians, as mature Christians, we know we have a mandate. We have a mandate. Our theme says in this year, a new decade, I will worship, I will fellowship, be part of the community. I will follow Jesus. I will serve. Help. I will witness. I will be a witness for, for, for the Lord. Don't hide it. There are some people who are just Christians in their house. When they go out there, they are everybody else. As I endeavor to attain the divine fruit, you will be fruitful. And our mandate as we have a job that we sometimes forget. We just want to fish for a ball. It's easier. We will speak the word to talk the word to come to Bible study, and we are just talking among ourselves. People who already know Jesus. What are we doing about the world out there? Go ye therefore. Are we mature Christians? going out there? Are we growing? Are we looking back and you know what? those things that I was doing when I was uh, when I was 13 in boarding school, I wouldn't do that, those things today. I'm not going to be crying for a pair of shoes and say I want a pair of shoes that is Wayne Brenner. Even when I know that the difficult situation that my parents have to go through. Are we, are we maturing? This is the year, this is the decade my year of divine fruitfulness as I press. And press is a big word. I actually realize that press is a big word. Press is not just touch. <laughs> we are actually have to be pushing. Are we pushing on to maturity? Are we trying? What are the things that you, you know what? Those things I have dropped. I have grown in this area. No, it's, uh, we are here to teach each other, to help each other, to uh, rebuke each other, and to learn from each other. And we, I come here and I listen to the sermons that others say, and I listen to pastor, and we are learning. Are we growing? Are we putting into practice what we are learning? Because it's one thing to hear the word, it's another to do something about it. And um, I will end here. Pastor, thank you.
Amen. Thank you, Sister Zbongile, for your good teaching for us to mature in the Lord and to be like those three Hebrew boys who didn't, you know, who said we are ready to sacrifice. We are ready for whatever it takes. And that is the attitude, that is the discipline required. These boys had been trained from their early days that the Lord God will rescue you. And if, even if he doesn't rescue you here, he will take you home to a better place. So they were able to say, you know what, we will stand our ground. And so must we, we must be disciplined, we must learn the word of God, we must exercise the disciplines before us so that we know what the Lord expects of us and then we are ready to exercise that no matter what comes against us. That is what the Lord is expecting and at some point the Lord is expecting a fruit from us.